Welcome to This Old App, a podcast about learning, coding, smashing stuff together, breaking things apart, startups, failing, winning, and any other buzzwords we can think of. Um, now you said I, I had not seen anyone complain about a, a message not going through from the chat side. You said you saw something on the log side, though. Paper Trail sent me a notice that said that we had two timeouts that looked to me like they are the timeouts um, where uh, maybe Slack didn't get the response they needed. Or, no, no, it was my guess is that it was Heroku timeouts, but. That was all. I mean, if you didn't see the email, I'll forward it to you. No, I didn't see the email. Go ahead and forward that on. Okay. Um, other than that, it's it's working just fine. Um, I keep adding technicians to it because it seems to be working well. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm past the point of worrying about having technicians use it and then us having to pull the plug on it. Have you um, gone to Twilio to look at what it costs per day for the usage that you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring that. Why, why would I want <laughs> um, Let me see. So let's see. Twilio, Twilio, Twilio. My gut tells me it's fine. It's well worth whatever we're paying. Well, no, 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 um, no, I, don't no, rem- I don't remember seeing an email saying, we just refilled your account, which tells me it's costing us nothing. And that, like, I want, but I guess for me, I'm thinking about in order for us to set pricing, if we were to have another client on this, we have to know what we can expect that they will have to pay for their own phone number, how much they will, they could ramp up if they bring a hundred people online all of a sudden. We have to come up with a scaling cost of, what will it cost for some another company to use? Now, you keep saying, I can't imagine it's blowing our budget. And I get that. But I'm looking for a specific data about okay. what so are the I costs. Have, I have you, your specific data for you. Okay? okay. Your specific data for the month of April, which I believe is even including, let me see. Our testing crowd? It's including our testing numbers is $3.20. I, uh, how are we going to live with that? Like, that, that's not sustainable. <laughs> well, also, it, you have so, Slack. So it's, it, it's, it, you have Slack, but we're going we're gonna to transition that off, right? We're going to, we're going to, yeah. we're going to, um, I would make it an option, but it's not. It's an option, but that's a paid option, right? That uh, if they want to do it, then then more yeah. work is gonna. We're gonna do something else. So yeah, it's it's three quarters of a cent per per SMS message. Okay, okay. and it's one penny for each MMS attachment. Yeah. So my gut tells me, and then the phone numbers. I think it's two. It's a dollar a phone number. It's a dollar a phone number. So my gut tells me that the service a month, the service is X amount per month. And then we just double whatever the costs are per message. So for, for a text message, it's a cent and a half for a, for an attachment, it's two cents. Mm Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't include our Firebase costs and all that. Um, so we, we may need to increase it even higher. Um, we may just need to say it's two cents for all messages. And that, well, because we know most the, of them will be SMS, we'll, we'll pull a good profit off that. We know the Blaze plan is where we'd start with Firebase, and that's 25 bucks a month. Uh, maybe 50 if we have a staging server doing the... And that, the, that supports multiple clients. That's not just one client, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't need a project yeah. per client. Yeah. So, so that, that won't be an issue. Either. So I, th- I think our costs are negligible. Um, especially if we go and get VC money, then, then they'll, then it'll definitely be. Uh, negligible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but this is, this is no unicorn. So, um, but no, that you, you now have the information you wanted on the cost. Yep. 
the cost is 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 very negligible. I'm not I'm not in any way concerned about that. So 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 I guess priorities is the next. I'm going to be traveling next week, so I won't get yep. a ton done. But yep. right now. I, f- I feel like I'm doing my own thing and you're doing your own thing, which is not necessarily bad. But um, I guess the question is, what do we think is the are the priorities for this? Not for construction specialties. I want the, I want you all to keep running, keep proving the value, find edge cases, find new uses. You last weekend did a diagram of possible work management, work order integration. But if we go back to the core product, which is consolidated SMS, what do we need to do next for a product that we show other people? Yep. I think it's simple. It's, so the stuff I'm working on is the the changing it from an array to an object. Okay, that's 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 code stuff that no no end user cares about. Yeah. Um, as far as features, it's um, message mess saving messages, which is what you're yep. working on. Yep. And then it's a directory from within Slack and adding to a directory from within Slack, and that's it. I think those three things are it. Okay. I, 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 I literally cannot think of much else for this part. Yeah. And now you take that and you, then you tie in a little bit of work order integration to where it can pop up information on the work order. That's something different, but for the core product, that may be it. Okay. Now we, we do have the problem of, sending images from chat to SMS, which Slack, it does not appear, will let us solve. Um, okay. I, I feel like that's wrong. Okay. I feel like I feel like you can have your bot listen to all posts without a trigger. Okay. And if well, that's the case... I, I, I will... I will... Um, yeah. So, so what I'm saying Slack won't do is you can't attach a anything to a slash command. If you're saying take it out of the slash command, uh, yeah, then it's, yes, I agree. Um, if especially if we use what are they called magic words? Um, I well, think if we if we were to take it from a slash command to magic words, it might work fine. But when that you is something it. we have to solve. But hold on, I'm going to upload an image to our Slack right this second. Um, okay. Let me find something that's funny. No, I don't have time for this. All right. A shark with a laser beam, I think, is what you're getting. But when I upload a file, there's a title and a comment. So I'm going to act like... Um, uh, okay, okay, here's this is what I'll do. I'm going to add a comment to the image. So the question is if I upload this image where someone needs to fix the, the broken laser on our shark, and I add the plus phone number, can your bot? scan that, say, okay, there's a JPEG with the plus marker or the flag. I'm going to send that on to the right party. That's what I think. In short, we, like, in short the answer is yes. What we'd be doing is we'd be getting rid of the slash command and making it a magic word instead. What's a magic word? magic word would be would be anything with a plus in front of it. And an image. Well, but so what you're saying is, is that, that, that would be a different protocol to send an image than it is to send a text, which can get confusing. Well, okay. But you're saying to me that you don't think you can upload an image with the slash command. I think the slash command is good. It sets, it allows for dialogue in that channel 
that can be separate from sending out an SMS text. But what if I upload an image in that channel and in the comment, I put in the phone number or the, the plus username, I think it's fine to have the bot do listen for both S slash SMS and hey, we want you to scan every single post. And if an image has a comment and it follows this, this criteria for that on to like take that image and forward it on. But I don't think, yes, I think Slack can handle that. I'm not sure that's a, that's a proper user experience. How? Okay. Because I guess the it, question. It's a little using, more complicated, right? How? Because you're telling, you're telling the end user that they have to do two separate things. Whereas if all they have to do is put a plus uh, plus sign with either a name or a, or a number, and then anything after that gets texted to them, whether it's a message or an image, then that's a lot simpler. Okay, that that's fine. But what I'm telling you is this is how Slack uploads images. Like, I'm not giving you a, a process that's out of the norm. The only thing that's abnormal would be I'm uploading a shark with a laser picture and I'm actually attaching a plus number to the comment. But I'm not, there's nothing in this that is different from the normal image upload to a Slack channel. I agree. You're right. You're not doing anything normal. I don't, I don't understand what your point is. <laughs> so I don't need te- technologically. You're right. So I don't see a need necessarily to get rid of the slash SMS. To me, that's very definitive of what you want to have happen there. But but I, again, it's it's a user experience thing. You're telling the user to do two different things depending on whether there's an attachment or not. <coughs> and I'm saying that that's not necessary. Oh, okay. Well, I, mean, I guess there's to me the plus sign could be used for other things, and it could trigger as to me it's a. I guess the plus sign is, I mean, I don't know how, if you would use it for other things in a chat channel that much, but. But you could, it's, it's, you're right. It's too, it, it, it's to me, too it's easy a, a trigger. Yes. And so why, that's why slash SMS to me is a great text to message trigger. It's very easy to remember. It doesn't, your team has absorbed it well. If you go and say to them, all right, you're going to, there's two different types of messages you can do slash SMS with the, t- with the, w- with the text, or if you upload an image, put that same username process in the comment. That, to me, that is that uh, it doesn't initially seem like an overload of instruction. So, but what if instead, instead of that, instead of, the convention of a slash command because that's what Slack sticks us with. Mm -hmm. What if instead of slash SMS, we do something like plus SMS and then the number or name and then the message or attachment. And then Slack is always looking for plus SMS. But plus SMS plus the number you mean? No, no, no. I mean, plus SMS and that's the trigger period, instead of a slash command, because we're using a slash because that's what Slack said is if you want to do a special command, you use a slash. I'm saying we because, issue, uh, well, well, we, I we think do that, it with magic words and plus SMS is the magic word. Yeah, but you don't do pl- you, you still need to give the image something to follow, something to send to. Yeah. You're saying plus SMS space plus the number or the name and then a message or for, for an image, you attach the image and you type plus SMS space plus the number or name. And then it's just triggering on that plus SMS. I guess there's something for the slash command that actually allows you to do more with it because that is a convention for all of Slack. Maybe. I'm well, not no, it sure. Does. Slash, I'm not sure slash commands are any more powerful than magic words. 
No, no, no. If you if you type in slash with a command, it does like Slack doesn't print that to the whole channel. Oh, that's fair. But no, so yeah, I, what I'm saying is I believe that there are benefits to using the slash command. Oh, I would probably prefer if you upload an image, like if I upload another image, uh, hold on a second. Let me see what happens here. Slash SMS, okay. So with that second image, that to me would be like, hey, do the same thing, except you don't need to add text to it. That to me is keeps your concern for, I'm not saying you're wrong to want to streamline the user knowing one approach, but I think the slash SM, the slash command has benefits that magic words doesn't. And that, that could be fine. So let me go over to pop over to my development channel real quick. Uh, that's not going to work um, because I don't have it running. All right, so go to Central SMS and Construction Specialties. All right, so I just uploaded something there with slash SMS in it, but it will not trigger the slash command. Okay, now, that is technically not a slash command. Exactly. But it's no different to the end user. It's just different to us. I would, I'm fine with this. Because now we can look, we may, and I don't know that this is true, we may be able to look for slash SMS in an attachment as a magic word. I don't know. I have to, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, what the bot will do. Oh, I mean the bot, if we had the ability to scan every message, then the bot would say, Oh, I see an image. Is this, from a local chat person. Okay, proceed. Does it have a comment? Yes, it does. Okay, proceed. Does it is it following our convention in the comment? Okay, yes, proceed. And then it should be able to push back with a it would push to our to to chasm, hey, here's the image link, here's the phone number, blah blah blah, here's the tech the text with it. Do what you may. To me, that's how it, in theory, should work if our bot is allowed to scan every message posted. Right. So that's where that'll be the next thing. After we finish up what we're working on, we'll see if we can get the bot to process that properly. Yeah. Okay. That makes the most sense to me. Yeah. Now, I I was trying to get away from the convention necessarily of a slash command because this won't always necessarily be Slack. But I understand what you're saying, that it, there are powers within the slash command that we need to at least acknowledge. Yeah. Okay. So I'll so keep working on an interface. Um, we talked yeah. about separating the – having a, a table for users and contacts. Right. Um we talked about that's, okay, yeah. I know the priorities. It, it, to me, it, a priority for me is to break this chasms up into the functions, but it's not to me something that matters for what you're doing. Um, it's not that hard. I did it pretty quick when I was messing around with it, but I but I I loaded the. Uh, the entire express server on there with the f interface. I'm like, this is painful and not how functions should work. So, um, all right. Another problem is you're not seeing what the errors look like on, um, on Slack is we get an error and when they resubmit successfully, the error goes away because it's ethereal. So, yeah. So the, well, the, the way the pattern I'm seeing is the, your employee is using the Slack browser instead of the desktop. And right. what we're seeing is that something is triggering a Heroku timeout, which is 30 seconds 
where something in our process is not returning a response within 30 seconds. And that's Heroku's own personal, if you, if your process doesn't finish in 30 seconds, we kill it. So something from this particular employee or this particular employee and the browser, the Slack browser client is triggering something on our, on our chasm app, express app, not to like to run longer than 30 seconds. The, what seems to be the pattern is that this happens in short little clips, like it happens one, two, three. That's what happened today. Right. It never happens in the afternoon, apparently. And there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the command she's writing. Like I'm looking through it. I'm like, the, it works for you. Like you go in, take the same exact command. It works for you. Um, the steps I've taken to get more information is I basically, I'm console logging the object in like for when someone sends a command from Slack and it hits chasm, we log both the request object and the response object completely into paper trail. But I'm, I haven't yet. I mean, it's a lot of data, and that's the part of the problem is trying to diff that entire thing is kind of loaded. But I'm still on the surface. I'm not seeing any behavior from the employee that says, oh, obviously this is what's causing the failure. Now, well, and I, I, I want to challenge. I'm not challenging the, the fact that the error you're getting is the 30-second error. What I'm going to challenge is that I don't think it's taking 30 seconds for her to get the error. I think she's getting the error in a shorter amount of time, which would tell me that something's interrupting it. And yet it's showing as an H12, which is the 32nd error on the Heroku side. That's so I've asked, her, I, I've asked her a question to make sure of that. What? Well, I need to see what her error she's getting is because... There's a big difference between the app sending back, hey, you you formatted your statement wrong, your command wrong, versus timeout. Like I'm that's what I, I need to see. And we talked about this on Slack. Oh, we need screenshots of the next time she sees this behavior. Because it'll tell yeah, me a she's little gonna bit. Grab that. Yeah. She's gonna grab that, so that'll help. It's just this is the pain. This is the painful part of any prototype when inconsistent errors. Like usually, I can find errors quick because there can they ha you can trigger them over and over doing the same behavior. <laughs> In this case, it's like I'm still willing to bet that this is just a Heroku hiccup, and we're not right. going to be safe until we have. Two, at least two dinos running because the load balancer on Heroku has no choice but to send the command to um, a single dino. But, but the fact that you can't trigger this error no matter what, like no other user, the only thing that you came to me was Daniel making the statement that he had an error. But the problem with that is he gave us zero feedback in the sense that like, there's zero feedback on the Heroku side. It never saw an error and he never gave us the actual screenshot of the error on what he saw. Um, and, and I don't expect users to always know that they need to do this stuff. It's just more of, um, we just don't have enough information to go on with what he experienced. Yeah, them. and Bar Barbara ju did just respond back that her when she gets the error, it's immediate. It's not thirty seconds later. So something's going on, um, but we need to see the actual error to even begin to diagnose it. Well, no, it makes it makes sense because remember, 
If Heroku doesn't reply in 30 seconds, it definitely didn't reply in three. And that's what Slack expects. Right. So, so she's probably getting the Slack error of, hey, you sent this off and we never got a response in three seconds. So we're calling right. this, we're calling it dead. <clears throat> but that's different than, yeah, so that actually makes sense. I would expect that. Okay. But the Slack threshold is so much shorter. The issue then is why is our, like when she sends this command through the browser, well, what's going to be interesting to see is does she trigger this on the desktop? Yeah. And, and she's, she's going to be downloading that later. So I expect next week she'll have switched over to that and we'll see what happens. I, I expect it's going to go way down. Um, I expect the number of errors we're going to see will go down. Yeah. And we're only seeing one a day, two a day on average, but yeah, I'm, I, I expect the same. I think, I don't think it's her. I think it's the browser client. Agreed. But I just don't see why our app cares. Okay. It cares because she's using Internet Explorer and it's like, what are you doing using such an outdated browser? Oh, she's fired. <laughs> she's fired from using this app. That, that blows all standards out of the water. What the heck? I didn't even know. Like when I said browser, I was thinking Chrome. Not IE. What version of IE? I've, over, I've already I've already tried to have this conversation a few times with her. What version of IE? I'll have to find out. I don't know. If it's eight, I ref- I'm not even working anymore on this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the hard part about. I mean, I feel like you, every developer, every startup goes through this type of thing with bugs you can't figure out and it puts you in a like it blocks you from making progress or trusting your code but i mean we're depending on slack as one piece of this and we can't control much of it what i what i really want to know is is the if the it could be none of it makes sense on why our why Heroku isn't responding within three seconds to an IE request. Like, I just don't understand that. It's it's still an HTTP request, no matter what, like in theory, IE is going to send the same Ajax background, request that a Chrome browser would send, but maybe I'm completely wrong on that. But it's just, you would think to me, it's just so not, it's very, it's not a binary error. It's not like, oh, if I follow these steps that she does, I'll trigger the error. That's that's not going to happen. No. And that's the problem, right? Is, is when you can't reproduce an error, you can't, it's very hard to fix an error. A, we can't reproduce it. B, we can't see anything useful from the logs as yeah. to what's causing it. So we're we're kind of handcuffed on solving it. <clears throat> um. So, other than that, um, the other tactic is to see if the problem is Heroku, and you know, really actually move. We've talked about this before. Moving the, um, moving our Express app into a strictly Firebase function structure to see if we eliminate these the problem um, of Heroku dinos and stuff. Because we do know that our dinos, we're paying for a dino. And if it's, if it goes to sleep, which I thought they didn't, it does have a, an extra 700 mil, uh, 700 millisecond or seven second additional delay when someone wakes it up. Seven seconds or 0.7 seconds. 
I think it's 7,000 milliseconds. I can't remember. It's not a ton, it's a but it's time to wake up. A seven seconds is a long time to wake up. A, a, I don't a think it, I think it's more like three when okay. you, but I'll have to look at it again. It's not really that long, but it's like noticeable. Like it's consistent. I can see when I look at the logs between yesterday and today or between two days, the very first request, which just happens to always be this one employee too. Um, there is a wake up time for the dyno, even though it's being paid for. It's just, it's not a, it's significant enough in that when, if Slack is making the request, that matters because you need three seconds to send back something. So that is significant. Right. I've, but it could be because we're on the $7 plan too. I don't know. I didn't think there was a distinction once you started paying, but maybe there is. I think there's a different kind of paying. Like 25 bucks might be there like, oh, this is really how it works thing. But Okay. On the other, so yeah, moving to Firebase functions is one way to see if we can just eliminate that problem. And again, the other, <laughs> the other thing is if it's IE, how much of this is a problem we care to fix? Right. So that could just be a case of moving her to IE10 or Chrome. Or Edge, right? Is she not able to or move Edge. to Edge? Or Edge. Uh, yeah, I, it's Windows 10, so she can probably move to Edge. I don't know the... Um, I don't know the nece necessarily the reason for sticking on IE besides inertia. Um but if if we break the inertia by having her use the Slack client instead of through the browser, I think that's going to solve our problem anyway. But it doesn't solve it if we have clients that want to use their browsers in for the in the future. We just know that's an issue that we might have to address. Yeah, but if it's an IE eight problem, it's not something we're necessarily going to address. Yeah, yeah, I don't expect there's that enough people that still use that version or I'll retire from doing startups. I have to deal with IE8 too much. <laughs> I've already had to do it for clients in the past. And I'm like, Nope. I don't no think, more. I don't think windows 10 will let you keep IE8 around. Will it? No, probably not, <clears throat> but I that's the process. The update on you. Well, yeah, I mean, the only reason why we got off of IE8 with my old gig at Innovations for Learning was that, and remember, this is what was always funny to me. It wasn't the schools that was the problem. The schools were actually updated with their, with their hardware and software enough that we didn't have to worry about them. It was the banks. These large institutions managing billions, trillions of dollars were still put, still had their employees on um, like XP up until the very last day that Microsoft said, we will no longer support this. And, and that tells you that the IT departments were only able to get buy-in from executives on that date because Microsoft said that. Otherwise, they would have kept on using XP. Right. And, and so we had to wait on like JP Morgan to finally say, okay, we're upgrading everyone. You don't have to deal with IE8 anymore. Like, I was always just baffled that an institution like that would be using a browser that had been that riddled with security issues. But, you know, they saved some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to speak. <clears throat> They didn't save us money. They cost us a good two weeks of extra work to make it work. For sure. Um, other than that, I the like the, just getting things done is you know strained on how much time I can focus on this versus the new project. But right. I've been I've been spending time on this error more than I maybe want to have been. But I felt like. If it's something fixable, I should at least figure it out. And right now I'm thinking 
I don't know that this is something that's worth our while to focus on. Maybe not. Uh, let's let's move to the Slack client. Let's get that fixed. Um, I'm going to push um, a fix to allow to make the username case insensitive because that's causing errors every once in a while. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's let's see if the move to the Slack client solves it. Okay. Anything else on the chasm side? No, well, nothing else. Nothing else. I think that's it. And then I've got I've got some work in progress on being able to add a u um, uh, SMS user from the from the chat, but that's going to take a bit more work. Any f- complaints, feedback from the folks out in the field with text messaging? No. Um, besides the, this isn't the way we used to do it in the old days. No, no complaints on, on, uh, on it at all. Would it go back to that one thing except for this is not how we used to do it. Uh, more of a general, well, I used to just talk to Don and now I'm getting messages from Daniel and from, and from Barbara and I, I'm getting messages from various people. So Oh, okay. it, 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 it's from a grumpy person. Um, okay. and it, it's not, uh, it's it. And after I explain why it's better and he, he agrees is better. It's just not the way it used to be is the, essentially the answer. No, is he talking about Don, you or Don, your dad? I think both. Cause no one wants to talk because- to the owner's kid. That's just, <laughs> that's just disrespectful. <laughs> well, yeah, I had to, I had to fight my way in there to start. Um, but I, I was able to do it just by, just by being nice and listening, letting them yeah. talk. So yep. um, I don't think that's the, uh, I think it's just a, uh, it's just a change inertia. Right. Um, which yeah, is, which, which is funny because we're, we're not pushing a lot of change. All we're doing is saying, use this number and you might hear from more than one of us. And, and my response is always, yeah, but at least multiple people are seeing it and you may get a better response than you would have in the past when only one person was seeing it. But what, it's still, that's hugely valuable. That feedback from that person, because if you think about these folks in the field and how they get work, and who they and how simple they feel their communications are, it is maybe disruptive to them to think, oh, I'm no longer talking to the head person or to this key person that has always been straightforward with me. Now I'm talking to some other person that maybe I don't like in the office. So, and I'm not not saying that anyone dislikes anybody at your specific office, but I think it's a dynamic that's worthwhile to be in a, like change is hard for stupid reasons often. And it's something to, for us to know about of if we're talking to on a sales level to a potential client, what are the, what happens when you bring this on and we'll have to, we'll say, what is the hierarchy of communications at your place? How many people in the field, have been with you for 10 years and they talk to one person all the time. What, what's going to happen when you make a change? Because I think it's, it's not some, it's not a change that I think a company would not buy this product for, but it could be one why they drop it after starting if they weren't expecting it. Like, Oh wow. We got, we got pushback huge and we're just going to kill it. And I'm like, no, I think setting expectations is smart when you do a sales process for a product, right? Yeah. I'm not sure you're going to get a lot of pushback. I I, I mean, yeah, we got a little pushback. It was more of, um, and yeah, it's a fair statement, but I, I, it's less disruptive what we're trying to roll out than trying to roll out a new chat app. Right. Um, so I, but I understand that's, that's a false dichotomy because that's not really the, the dichotomy is a new number that you're texting in order to reach everyone in the office versus the same number that you've been using for years to reach this one person. Okay. So I get it. 
All right. So that's all I got for chasms today. But yeah, I think that's all I got too. All right. We will talk next week. Sounds good. Thanks for listening to this old app. Show notes and previous episodes can be found on our website at www.thisoldapp.online. Reviews on Apple iTunes are always appreciated and help promote the show. For questions, comments, or things you would like to hear on future shows, please email us at hello at thisoldapp.online. Show music is Guns Blazing by Fab Claxton, licensed by Pond5. Voiceover work by makingvoices.com. You'll hear from us soon.